Kraft Food Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. there the man with soul so dead who never to himself hath said. It's time to get my 1948 automobile license plates. <laughs> yes. The great Gildersleeve is a man who does things on time, but never much ahead of time. That's why late in the afternoon on the last day, he's waiting in line. <laughs> what a way to waste an afternoon. Took me two hours to get inside the building. Probably would have my license plates by now if I hadn't got in the other line. And I wasn't thirsty at all. Well, I'm next. Oh, five o'clock. Wonder what time they close. Hey, clerk, what time do you close this window? Five o'clock. Yeah, I just made it. Give me the... oh, you come back here and raise that window. I want my license plates. Clerk, raise that window. All right, John, try me tomorrow. You open up or you'll be out of a job. I'm a city official. So am I. Yeah, but I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. I'm the water commissioner. Oh. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> commissioner. You've had six weeks to get your license plates. What have you been doing all that time? Plugging leaks in the water department? Let's not be impertinent, bud. Just give me the plates. A low number. Okay. Where's your registration slip? Registration slip? <laughs> it's on my steering wheel. Oh? Did you bring your steering wheel? <laughs> now, see here. Just because I forgot... See you tomorrow, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Nothing like Bertie's oatmeal in the morning. Aren't you eating any breakfast, Marjorie? All I wanted was grapefruit. Well, there's nothing like grapefruit as a bracer for breakfast. But I always like a little something sweet afterward to take away the sour taste. <laughs> Pass the sugar, Leroy. Okay, I'm here. Leroy, don't try to talk with food in your mouth. Okay. Don't swallow it. Chew it. Chew oatmeal? What's that? A... Never mind. <laughs> you don't have to gulp it as if you're afraid it'll get away. Leroy stores it like a pelican. Gosh, I've got to eat in a hurry or I'll be late for school. If you're down to breakfast on time, young man. Well, gosh, I was up late doing my homework. PTA ought to do something about teachers who give so much homework to little boys like me. I don't get my proper rest. You probably would if you'd get that smelly old turtle out of your room. Turtle? Leroy, I thought I heard something walking around last night. <laughs> gosh, you can't blame the turtle. They doze during the day, so at night... There'll they... be no dozing turtles around this house. You get rid of that thing so you can concentrate on your homework and get to bed nights. I did my homework before dinner, Uncle. You see, Leroy? Little Marjorie. Do it the way Marjorie does. Don't always be putting things off. I always say procrastination is the thief of time. Remember that. Now run along to school. Okay, Unc. It's so late, how about giving us a ride? Yes, drop us at school on your way to the office, Unky. Well, I would, but I'm not taking the car out of the garage today. What's the matter? They started rationing gas again? No, Leroy, but... Well, it wouldn't be legal. Not legal to drive us to school? Oh, of course, that's legal, my dear, but your old uncle doesn't have his new license plates. Uncle Mort, wasn't yesterday the last day to get them? Well, yes, but... Ah! Leroy. <laughs> you get going to school, you hear, on the run. Well, for corn's sake. Honestly, Uncle Mort. Marjorie, you better go along, too. Well, if I must walk. Well, see you later, Uncle. And Leroy, don't you slam that door. Oh, <laughs> What was that, Mr. Gilsley? Uh, nothing, Bertie, nothing. Just the little children going off to school, jet-propelled. Oh. 
Well, if you want more coffee, just holler. I'll be out on the service porch. No, thanks, Bertie. I'm full of oatmeal. And Mr. Gilsey. Yeah? Before you leave, don't forget to call Mr. Charlie Anderson at the reservoir. He phoned early. Huh? Wonder what's wrong out there now. I have to call Charlie later. I've got to run now. I think I'll take the bus, Bertie. What's wrong with the car, Mr. Gilsey? Well, the license plates are out of order. <laughs> have to attend to that the first thing this morning. Oh, yes. It's been a long time since I rode a bus. Which one do I take to get to the city hall? Oh, that's easy. You go down to the corner. You know where the bus stop is. Yeah. And you know them red buses that pass there every half hour on the half hour? Uh-huh. Red bus. Well, you don't take that one. You wait for a yellow one. <laughs> yellow one? No. Oh. But that won't get you to the city hall. No, Bertie, what's this all about? <laughs> well, nothing to it, Mr. Gilsey. After the man gives you a transfer... Transfer. ...to the Main Street bus, that's the green one... You catch the green one going south, and you're in. Zeef. I had no idea the transit companies made such a project of getting down to the city hall. <laughs> well, they raised the fare, so they got to make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilsey, I think all the city officials ought to get busy. Now, Bertie, let's not be critical of the city officials. We're doing a good job. Oh, I know you are. We may have our little problems, but Summerfield is a growing city. People moving in, industry springing up. Look out that window, Bertie. You see all that smoke? Pretty soon we'd be just like Los Angeles. <laughs> you can't see the town for the smoke. I'm looking, Mr. Kelsey. As soon as I wash the clothes, I'm going to clean that window. Oh. Of course, somebody else was going to clean them all last fall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Got to catch a bus, Bertie. <laughs> About time. Maybe a fair ready. Move to the rear of the bus, please. Did she say a red one or a... Hey, driver, does this bus go down? No to... talking to the driver. Read the signs. Oh, pardon me. Well, this is a nice little subdivision. Not many houses, but the trailers all look new. Hey, wait a minute. Little driver, stop that bus. What's the matter, Mac? You're going away from town. Let me off here. Why didn't you tell me this was the wrong bus? Why didn't you ask? Oh, you said no talk. Well, you did. Uh, way out here in the Thule's. By the time I get back to the city hall, I'll need 1950 license plates. <laughs> Oh, here comes the car. Hey, mister, how about a ride to town? Oh, well, who wants a ride with a load of pigs? <laughs> I'll never get back. Hey! Watch out, look where you're going. Oh! <laughs> Charlie Anderson, you nearly ran over me. What's the big idea? Hey, Commissioner. Mighty fancy footwork he's doing there. Michigan and Notre Dame be after you for the backfield if you was a younger man, had a high school education. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Scaring people isn't funny. Why aren't you on the job at the reservoir? Why aren't you on the job at the office? Dad busted water department's going to the dogs. Now, Charlie, just because you've been with us a few years, don't bite the hand that feeds you. I wouldn't if it fed me enough. <laughs> Let's watch our attitude, Charlie. Well, if you don't like it, Commissioner, you can get yourself another boy. George, if that's the way you feel, I may just get my... Go ahead, get him. Throw me out. An old man of 70 can always latch on somewhere. Now, nah, Charlie, you just tend to business. How about driving me back to the city hall? Oh, can't do it, Commissioner. Got a drum of gasoline in back for the pump engine. But, Charlie, I can't walk into town. Well, if the pump stops, we ain't got no water. If there ain't no water, the water commissioner might get himself another boy. <laughs> so long, Commissioner. Charlie, come back here. These days, I'll get myself another boy. Why don't people get their license plates early? Anyway, the line isn't quite as long as it was yesterday. Nothing's going to stop me this time. Well, 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 if it isn't my friend Gildersleeve. Do you have to have a license for that old chariot of yours? 
You too, Hooker. Fall in behind me. I got mine a month ago, Gildy. I always say procrastination is the thief of time. Great. Let's try to be a little original, Horace. What are you loitering in the halls for, anyway? I was just on my way out when I saw you. Have you, uh, talked to Chief Gates lately? No. What's up? Well, I suppose the Chief will tell you in due time. There are big plans in the wind for the S-P-E-B S-Q-S-A. What's that? Another third party? No, no, Gildy. The S-P-E-B... Don't repeat it. Just tell me what it means, Judge. Gildy, you know about the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America Incorporated, don't you? Oh, that. Well, who doesn't? Chief Gates is local chairman, and the Jolly Boys are going to enter the Capital City Contest next month. Well, that's wonderful. But wait a minute, Judge. There are five members of the Jolly Boys, and only four in a quartet. That's right, Gildy. <laughs> what are you cackling about? Floyd sings top tenor, Peavy is baritone, of course, Chief Gates is bass. And who do you think the chief will select to sing lead? Well, I wonder. <laughs> oh, I know what you're thinking, Gildy. And as a crooner, you're pretty good. Well, there are other good ones. Crosby, Nelson, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> but a quartet requires close harmony. And the chief has frequently complimented me upon my teamwork in group singing. Oh, well, he's complimented me, too. What about Gildy? Well, I... now I'll see you here, Hooker. This is no place for favoritism. Oh, no. Everyone must be judged on his own merits. See you around, Gildy. Where are you going now? Down to the police station. I have a pinochle game set with Chief Gates. <laughs> um, apple polisher, I'm going with you. You're next, Mr. Gildersleeve. Let's have your registration slip. Uh, sorry, I can't stay. Wait up, Judge. I'll never get those license plates. <laughs> We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You know, Judge Hooker's quite a fellow. I stopped in to see him the other day and quite by accident mentioned parquet margarine, the margarine of craft quality. The judge recognized the name and said, Parquet margarine? Why, that's the favorite spread at my house. It's a favorite all over America, Judge. Millions of women say it's the perfect topping for bread, rolls, muffins, pancakes. Waffles, too. Very good on waffles. Naturally. Parquet is made from only the choice products of American farms. Each pound is fortified with 15,000 units of vitamin A. 15,000? That's right. Parquet is just as nourishing as it is delicious. Women know that parquet is a good food for their families. Their families know how good it tastes. Seems to me I've heard various ladies talking about the low-cost parquet. Certainly. Why, do you realize tasty, tempting parquet margarine, the margarine made by Kraft, actually costs less today than it did a year ago, actually costs less. That's the kind of talk I like. And parquet margarine is the margarine everyone likes. Nourishing, economical, delicious. Millions of women all over America insist on nourishing, economical parquet margarine. It tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> Now let's rejoin our friend, the great Gildersleeve. His mission to get his 1948 license plates has been interrupted by a new crisis. Who will sing lead for the Jolly Boys when they go to the barbershop quartet contest in Capital City? Peavy, I'm a better singer than Judge Hooker, aren't I? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but Peavy, I am. You know I am. Yes, I know it, but I wouldn't say it. The judge is a pretty good customer of mine. Oh, my goodness. But down deep in your heart, you wouldn't say he's better than I am, would you? No, I wouldn't. Well, that's better. Because you're a pretty good customer of mine, too. <laughs> Peavy. But it would be too bad if you missed out, Mr. Gillespie. We should have a lot of fun on those two days in Capital City. Mrs. Peavy has approved the trip. Oh, uh -huh. I rather think Margaret Truman's tour paved the way for me. <laughs> Made quite an impression with Mrs. Peavy. Well, well, I'll be there, too, if I ever locate Chief Gates. Hooker and I went looking for him, but he wasn't in. I've been walking all over town, Peavy. Car breakdown? No, but I didn't get my new plates. Day late, so I've been walking. Oh, that's too bad, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why didn't you take the bus? The bus? Peavy, have you ever tried to ride the buses in this town? Takes you all day to get someplace. All right. No, Mr. Gildersleeve, I ride them every day. 
have to leave home a little earlier in the morning and usually get home to Mrs. Peavy quite late in the evening. I rather like the buses. <laughs> well, I'd have my place if it wasn't for this quartet I business. I was a lady as yours, you must allow. Well, Floyd, not bad. Hi, fellas, what's up? Well, fine. Give me a couple of packs of cigarettes, Peavy. Just been in that line to get my license plate so my nerves are shot. Huh? You late too, Floyd? Yeah, you ought to see the line. Ain't seen one so long since cigarettes were rationed. Hey, give me two cartons instead of two packs, Peeve. The news ain't been too good lately. Very well, Floyd. No limit. Say, uh, Kamish, I picked up the chief and drove him down to the city hall when I got my plates. And you picked was... up the chief of police before you got your plates? Yeah. You can get fined, Floyd. You're a day late. Fined by Chief Gates? He's too soft-hearted to find a friend. Just looked the other way when he got in and out of the car. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, while he's in a good mood, I guess I better go see him about who's going to sing lead. Oh, yeah, he said he had a hard time making up his mind who to take to Capital City. Frankly, I wish you was going along, Commission. What's this, Floyd? Well, it ain't just this trip. If we win, we go to the district convention. District convention? By George, I'm not going to miss that. And maybe the national in Oklahoma City next June. Make a big hit with those squaws with a little string of beads. That should be very interesting. I've never seen an ending. Sorry you won't be with us, Commish. That settles it. I'm going down and tell Chief Gates a thing or two. I'll be in the quartet or know the reason why. Had a boy, Commish. Be good to have you aboard. But easy does it. You know, you and the chief never was too chummy, was you? Well, he's never had anything against me. Yeah, but you ain't been like him and the judge. Pitching horseshoes in the park on Sunday, playing pinochle. Darn that hooker. If there's anything I can't stand, it's apple policy. Oh, before I go, you better give me a couple of cigars, Peavy. Very well. May I suggest about four of the 32-cent Acme Otos? 32-cent cigars? Peavy. That's what the judge bought. But hooker doesn't smoke. The chief does. <laughs> Give me the Acme Odos. Chief had better be in this time. I've walked ten miles today at least. Ugh, jails. Something about jails. Uh, pardon me. Pardon me, desk sergeant. Yes? <laughs> Is the chief in? No. Oh. Anything I can do for you? Well, uh, no. I have to see the chief. That's what they all say. The desk sergeant will never do. Ah. So you have to tell somebody. You want to get it off your chest. You wander into the station and want to get locked up. What? But will you confess to me? No. You have to tell the chief. I'm the guy who locks you up anyway, so why don't you tell me? Locks who up? Come on, buddy. Fess up to me. Who knows? I may be chief someday. Well, I did... T no, see here. <laughs> I didn't come here to confess anything. I'm the water commissioner. The water commissioner? Oh, well, pardon me from the worried look. I thought you... Never done... mind. Where's the chief? Just went off duty, Mr. Commissioner. Fine fellow, the chief. Yes, yes. A little easy going, but you know where he lives, don't you? Well, down the street here, someplace. Third house down. You can't miss it. If you come into this corner cell here, you can see it through the bars. No, thanks. I'll find it. <laughs> yeah, Chief's home, all right. I can see him through the kitchen window. I'll go in the back way. More personal. Yeah. Well, at least Hooker's not hanging around. Well, Commissioner Gildersleeve... Uh... Come in, come in. Yeah, thank you, Chief. Commissioner, this is a real surprise. I'm glad you dropped in. Well, it's been quite some time since I've been over. I thought I should. <laughs> good, good. I've been looking forward to a little heart-to-heart, -heart, man to man friend-to-friend -friend talk to you. Huh? And if you don't mind, we'll just stay out here in the kitchen. Hazel usually prepares my foot bath when I come off duty, but uh, she's upstairs with a little headache. Oh, uh, too bad. I noticed you had your shoes and socks off, but I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like hot water and salt after you've been pounding the pavement, Commissioner. I'll go right ahead, if you don't mind. Oh, no. No, I, I don't mind. In fact, my feet are a little tired. I might get in there with you. <laughs> no, 
don't believe there's room, Commissioner. <laughs> oh, I had a hard day, too. Up and down the street since morning, warning people to get their new license plates. Warning them? Their cars shouldn't even be on the streets. I know, Commissioner, but... Oh, oh. oh it's a little hot, but what comforts. Gee, what feet. <laughs> even look bigger underwater. What's that, Commissioner? Uh, I say, uh, have you heard from your daughter? Oh, no, no, but nice of you to ask, Commissioner. Uh, Hand me the salt there, will you, Mr. Gildersleeve? The salt? Oh, sure. Glad to. Well, I see you have some barbershop quartet songs laid out here on the table. Oh, yes, yes, I have. I tried to call you, Commissioner, about a little trip some of us will be making. Oh? Nice selection here. Kentucky Babe, Silver Threads. And it's my responsibility to select a team of four from the Jolly Boys. You understand. Oh, yes, I understand. Yeah, here's one that calls for a good lead singer. Darling, I am growing old. Commissioner. Still with threads among the gold. Shine upon my brow. Now, look, Commissioner. Huh? I admit you're a fine singer. But this thing has put me in a difficult position. What's difficult about it? I'm a better singer than Hooker. Leave the old goat home. Now, Commissioner, is that nice? What does being nice have to do with it? Your job as chairman is to make the right selection, isn't it? But, Commissioner, the judge has been awfully good to me. Just had me and Hazel out to dinner the other evening. And he's always asking about my mother and Salinas. Oh, my goodness. I just asked about your daughter. Yes, but let's be good sports about this, Commissioner. Good sports? That's the trouble with you, Chief. You're too easygoing. You have to be hard in this world. You let people push you around, even the lawbreakers. Mr. Gildersleeve. It's true, Chief. You better be careful of that desk sergeant will be chief before you know it. The desk sergeant? Just a friendly warning. Come to think of it, he has been a little aggressive lately. You're darn right. And I'm your friend, or I wouldn't speak to you like this. Why, Ned, maybe you're right, Commissioner. I guess it is time I laid down the law around here a little at that. You bet. Let the Boy Scouts help the women across the streets. Get tough, Chief, and start getting tough tonight at the Jolly Boys rehearsal. I hate to tell the judge, my old friend. You have to. Well, perhaps we can find something else for him. Make him a uh, uh, corresponding secretary or something. Corresponding secretary? What does he do? He stays home, answers the correspondent. <laughs> I'm sure the judge will be honored and delighted. Yes, sir. And congratulations, Chief. On your new attitude. Well, I guess I have you to thank, Mr. Gildersleeve. And I admit I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, glad to be of help. It's a good thing we got our feet together. Uh, heads together. Huh? <laughs> See you tonight, Chief. Oh, here's the salt. <laughs> You will be, you will be Always young and fair to me <laughs> Pretty good <laughs> Yeah, light on up at the club already Some of the boys must have come early Hooker, for one but What do I care? <laughs> Hooker's flat Do they ever need me? Oh, brother this may be the chief now. Oh, no, it's only Gildy. Hi, Commissioner. Hi, Floyd. And join us, Mr. Gildy, please. We're just limbering up. Yes, Gildy. You might try to sing the chief's part until he comes. Why, you old And brother. until our chairman shows up, I'll direct the rehearsal. I'm certain he'd want it that way. Wait till Gates does come. All together now, she's only a bird in a gilded cage. I'll supply the lead. Go right ahead, Judge. I'll supply the bird. <laughs> now, Gildy, just because you're not going on the trip, don't be bitter. Got a little surprise coming, Judge. Ever hear of a corresponding secretary? What? <laughs> well, hello, fellas. Hi, 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 Hi Chief. Oh, I'm sorry to be late, but I guess a policeman's work is never done. Well, you're here, Donald. 
Now we can really get going. Donald. I meant to be here early, too, but I've been tagging cars all the way down to the club. Tagging cars? You cheat? Yes, me. People have been taking advantage of me about long enough, and I can be pushed too far. It's time to get tough. Right, Commissioner? Right, Chief. Hey, the Chief saw it. Well, who wouldn't be? Oh. Some smart guy even had the audacity to park right in front of our club without his new license plates. Uh, Chief, you mean the 1936 Studebaker? Yes, it was a Studebaker, come to think of it. Well, don't get upset about that car. It's mine. What are we seeing, fellas? Your car, Mr. Gildersleeve? I tried to get my license plates yesterday and today. And but... you, a city official. Well, I'll get them tomorrow, Chief. Uh, Donald. First thing. The penalty to all offenders is ten dollars. Ten dollars? And Commissioner Gildersleeve. Uh, yes? What kind of a corresponding secretary do you think you'll make? Well, I don't know. I've never... No, Chief! Great Gildersleeve will be right back, folks. It's a better spread for bread. Remember the name Parquet, the margarine of craft quality. Today, more than ever, it's the better buy for both bread and budget. Smooth, rich Parquet actually costs less now than it did a year ago. Parquet is as delicious as it is nourishing. Each tasty pound is fortified with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. Every one is made from only the choice products of American farms. Don't miss out on this economical spread that's an outstanding favorite for American bread. Ask for Parquet Margarine, P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. Uh, look at all the work at my desk. That Bessie. Could have gotten down here yesterday. Uh... Commissioner Gildersleeve. Uh, what do you want, Chief? I said I'd pay the $10. I think I have good news for you. We're allowed to take an alternate to the quartet contest. We are? Yes. And you really should sing lead, so we'll make the judge the alternate. Well, but, Chief, what about... Aren't you still mad? Mad? Ho, 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 ho. I'm afraid I owe you an apology. No wonder you couldn't get your license plates yesterday. They ran out of new plates about four in the afternoon. They did? I mean, yeah, they did. <laughs> but they'll have more in this noon. Well, good. I'll get right down there at the stroke of 12. That's a good idea. There's a line outside the city hall already. Well, not again. Good night, folks. They're really keeping me in line. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, Walter O'Keefe will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And remember, this is the closing week for the March of Dimes campaign. Have you given yet? Listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. <laughs> Everybody likes macaroni and cheese, especially if it's fluffy light, tender, and full of grand cheddar cheese flavor. And even the busiest homemaker can make it often with Kraft Dinner. Each package of Kraft Dinner contains a special macaroni that cooks in just seven minutes. Then you stir in the golden Kraft grated that comes in the same package. There, in a jiffy, you have a marvelous main dish of macaroni and cheese, four generous servings of it. Get several packages from your food store. Quick cooking, delicious, economical, craft dinner.
this is NBC, the national broadcasting company.